Hello everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and today you are joining me for a tutorial. So this is going to be a diaper changing pad tutorial that uh, I created and I'm sharing with you all for free. So I wanted to put this out there. This is something that I came up with on my own. Um, there is no uh, paper pattern for this. There is no specific pattern instructions. Um, it's all very um, simple rectangles and you can adapt and change this as you please. So um, I think this tutorial will be good for beginners. I think if you are an experienced sewist then you can look down below for the list of materials, general instructions, and have fun. Um, if you are more of a beginner and you would like to see a little bit more step-by-step -step what I did to create this, um, I did film with my phone. Um, I don't have specialty equipment to record myself sewing or to record, um, you know, aerial views and things like that. It, I don't have a lot of uh, equipment to do specialty recording like that, so um, I just did point and shoot with my phone. Um, and I hope that at least helps those who um, are more of a beginner and need a little bit more help. So before I get into the video and I start showing you the, um, the steps, I wanted to show you um, the two pads that I've made. I've actually made three. I made So in this video, I am making two of these. They're the exact same diaper changing pad, exact same size. They are twins. <laughs> And I gave one away to my best friend who has um, two daughters. And I actually came up with this pattern for her when she was having her first baby. She's told me multiple times how wonderful and useful it has been for her. She chooses to use it on her diaper changing pad. And so actually sending her the new one, I was hoping maybe if she needed it for more on the go diaper changing needs, she could shove one in her um, her diaper backpack so yeah so this is the one that I make in the video and then after the video I made this one a um, couple things up front there is elastic on this one and on this one later I put a snap on here both of these things are completely optional and not necessary um, if you just want a diaper changing pad you don't need any kind of closure but um, it's an option that's there if you if you would like to have it. Um, I also so I am an expectant first time mom, um, and uh, I am. Let's see, this is July 2020. It's later July 2020, and um, yeah, um, I am. I'm due. I'm sorry, my hair. <laughs> I am due in November, early November. So. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd put that out there. This, um, the first pad that I made, I will list the size that I made in the description. I'll call it the owl pad maybe. And this pad I made after. It is a Riley Blake fabric um, with little animals and rain clouds. It's really cute. I chose to put a snap on there. There's not instructions on how to make this tab or snap in the video. So if you have a snap tool and um, you know some basic sewing, then you can figure out easily how to make this little tab. Um, it's just, you know, sew two scraps right sides together, turn them out, um, and then I stitch them into the material the exact same way that I stitched this elastic piece into the material. So that's in the video tutorial. Um, a couple other recommendations. If you have a, a sew, an older sewing machine, you might want to test sewing this fabric. This is laminated fabric. That's what's going to make it easy to wipe and clean. Um, so you might want to test out your machine first and get out any kinks. Um, I also recommend using a new needle or a needle that's going to work with this fabric. So um, either a nice new sharp universal needle might work fine, um, maybe even a leather needle. 
Um, I'm not sure if there is a recommended needle, but you do want to just be thoughtful. You don't want to use a ballpoint jersey needle. You want something that's going to be able to go through this fabric because sewing this is a slightly more challenging than regular cotton. It's got this kind of plastic coating. Um, so I think that's the basics. If you're looking for laminated cotton, I know in the states that fabric.com carries laminated fabric and um, I think they're based in the United States. Um, and then I found some, this actually I found on Etsy. So I'm sure there are lots of websites that probably carry some, but those are at least two websites where you can find laminated cotton. Um, you might even find some in your local quilt shop if you have one of those. I hope this video is uh, tutorial is helpful for you and if you have any questions please leave them down below. I have a very small channel. I put together this for free um, just to be helpful and to help other either new moms or grandmas or any crafty people that want to make for babies that are coming into their lives. So um, if you appreciate this video let me know below and um, I don't know, maybe I should create a hashtag. What hashtag should I do? Because I would love to see your creations. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Leave any general questions that you have below. I will do my best to get to you as soon as I can. Please be patient with me. Um, all right, enjoy, bye-bye. Hello everyone, um, I'm working on a diaper changing pad and I just wanted to show you some of the materials that I'm using and um, this should be a really quick project so um, that's actually some um, baby leggings that I've made um, and a little baby hat which I'll show at some point if I haven't already so this is made out of a laminated um, cotton fabric so this is a uh, let's see it's called the urban jungle by Robert Kaufman um, and yeah, it's laminated cotton so it, that it has a waterproof exterior. Um, and I have some batting. This is, um, you know, if you have some leftovers, if you're a quilter, um, you might have enough leftovers from something. I picked up a couple of these crib size um, packages of batting. Um, I do want to make um, a little baby crib size quilt. so. Um, maybe I'll use that for that or I might have to get some more who knows <laughs> so I'm actually making two in one right now um, so uh, before I move this I bought a yard of fabric and what I've done is squared the sides um, and then um, I'm not going to explain what that means um, uh, or show how to do it I'll explain it just means that I made a nice square cut so that this um, this line down here and that line right there meet at a 90 degree angle and there aren't any pieces under here that are shorter or longer or whatever. Um, I'm going to cut off the selvages as well in a sec. Okay, so I've got two pieces here and um, they actually are folded at the end. So I took um, just over a yard of fabric I got when I ordered this, um, cut it um, squared on both sides and then cut it right down the middle so that I had two equal pieces. Um, you don't need to make two but I just figured I could have um, one at the house, one in my diaper bag, or one in each vehicle, whatever um, you know I feel like I need. So two seems just like it would be handy. Um, so cut it in half and then now what I'm gonna do is cut off the selvages and uh, the two folded pieces at the end there. I'm going to have to cut those evenly. And then I will have um, four rectangles um, to make two diaper changing pads. And I will cut down the batting to the same size. Um, so two pieces of batting that are the same size as this, um, the exact same size as this uh, rectangle of fabric. All right, I'm at the next step where I'm actually going to start putting these together. Um, and I just wanted to show you um, what this looks like before I get there. So I've got two pieces of batting, four pieces of um, laminated uh, cotton, all cut to the same size. So the size does not matter. I happen to have cut um, 
it's 18 and three quarters of an inch, sorry, 18 and three quarters of an inch um, by 28 inches. Um, and I was just making the most use of all of the fabric that I had. So I had very, very little waste. Um, but the size is really up to you. Um, if you want to make it bigger or smaller, if you wanted to make it fit a changing table or something like that. Um, I know my friend used hers on her changing table, so um, you can make it any size you want. Um, it's just a simple rectangle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go probably outside and I'm going to take some basting spray. Um, I, there's probably different brands and things. This is some that's actually old. I've had sitting around for at least a couple years. <laughs> it's got some dirt on there. Um, but it's just a basting spray. And what I'll do is to the wrong side of one of these pieces, I will um, spray the batting onto the wrong side. So I just wanted to show you this little um, journal entry that I put in my sewing journal, um, just with details and some quick little notes on how to do it. Um, I mostly did that for the video because I um, know how to do that in my head, but this is my sewing journal where I have um, recorded different projects I've made and like different sizes and notes and things that I used. So I love this journal. Um, it's a little moleskin journal. Okay, so I'm gonna take the wrong side of this. So I'll take one of these and one of the basting, um, one of the batting pieces. Um, so I'll take this here and I will attach it to the wrong side of this. And that will be one and then I'll just repeat that again for the second for the second one so um so I know here on my porch spray basting this um yeah my poor old weathered porch that needs work but <laughs> um spray basting these and I wanted to just show you um what this looks like a little bit so um I've already finished this back side um and I'm spraying this side so what I'm gonna do is just very lightly spray it, and I'll show you that actually. Um, don't need a lot, and then I'm just going to take that, gently pull it down, and I'm not gonna press anything yet. I'm gonna start at the center and smooth, smooth down from the center. And that works really well for me. It's quick and easy, and um, if you don't have a uh, spray based and or you don't want to buy it um, you can actually just sew around the the um, seam you can sew it down to it um, but just make sure you stay inside the seam allowance and not go um, past the seam allowance so one thing that might happen to you it happens to me and um, I think uh, is pretty typical is that the batting will um it, if you use the spray basting even though i cut the batting to the exact same size when you smooth it out after um spraying it on uh it's it, it will sometimes grow a little bit so um, what i'm gonna do is just trim using um my rotary cutter and one of my um one of my rulers I'm just going to trim it down. You could do that after you sew it, but um, I, it might be a little bit distracting while I'm sewing. It's just easier to have nice clean edges. So I'm just going to take the time to do that. Um, and then I'm going to put these right sides together. So um, I've actually got these fancy new clips, which I'm so behind the curveball on, but because um, they've been around for a while, but <laughs> I just got them. So what I'm going to do is put these right sides together. So I've got um, pretty sides touching. And you'll have on one side the fabric with the batting attached, whether you spray basted it or sewed it together. Um, and I'm probably going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you do the sewing, you're going to want to make it sew it, you know, inside of that allowance. So if you do a quarter of an inch for the seam, you, you would want to baste it together at like an, an eighth of an inch or something. Okay, so I'm going to sew these right sides together. Just simple, going around the rectangle, um, pivoting at the corners. And then I'll probably leave a small three inch opening. Um, I usually try to do the smallest opening I can get by with um, because it just 
helps when you go to turn it, when you go to finish it. It looks a little bit neater, it's easier. So I had this idea um, to try something. Um, I thought about some kind of closure um, for keeping it closed and um, I have this scrap black elastic that I cut in half and each piece is about seven inches. So um, one for each, each changing pad. Um, and then um, just temporarily played around with um, where to put it and if it would be a good idea. So this isn't done, but um, I've got it clipped and pinned on there just to temporarily hold it and see how it would do. And I think it's a good idea. So for this first one, I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. And um, yeah, so that was just last minute idea that I've added here. So how I'm gonna attach this piece of elastic, I've decided that I'm going to put it roughly four inches um, down on one of the shorter sides, doesn't matter which side. And then um, I just kind of figured that by playing around four inches is a good place to be. Four and a half um, was like in the middle the way I folded it, <clears throat> but I think it's it'll maybe be easier with at four inches. The trick is that, so I've got one of the pieces that has a uh, batting. The trick is to put the elastic um, facing the inside. So the cut edges will be sewn to the edge of the fabric here and the fold is facing inside. And this will be sewn so that um, when we turn it right side out, the elastic is on the outside and not accidentally sewn into the into the inside, which would be bad. Okay, how I'm gonna sew this on, you could probably back stitch a little straight stitch. Um, I'm doing it an eighth of an inch and I've decided to do um, a zigzag stitch instead. So I've got this width set on two and, oops, two, and the length set at one and a half. Um, and we'll see how that looks. Um, I'm just trying to stay um, within the seam allowance, so not going beyond that quarter of an inch that I'll be sewing it at eventually. And um, I will probably, when I do sew the two pieces together, I'll probably backstitch again. Okay, I've got right sides together. I've got my um, elastic attached and I've uh, clipped together, you can pin together, um, the pieces right sides together and I'm ready to sew it. Um, just make sure that you put some kind of markers for the um, area that you're not sewing closed. So I'm gonna go ahead, sew starting at one of the pins, um, you know, around the rectangle and then stopping and backstitching, um, backstitching at both ends and then turn it right side out and then I'll show you the next step. Short tip is to do either some grading around the corners before you turn it inside out or to just cut it off. And that's what I'm gonna do is cut it off like so. And um, just make sure you don't snip your thread. And uh, that will help um, when you turn it so that's not so bulky right here in the corner. Okay, it's sewn and turned right side out. And you can see my elastic was sewn on correctly. Um, so, We've got um, a couple more steps to do. Um, this has a lot of air in it right now. Sorry, I'm moving a lot, maybe that's, okay. It has a lot of air in it. Um, so um, what I'm gonna do is gently press this with low heat with my iron. I just gotta clean up all of, all of that. <laughs> So I'm gonna press this, and um, one thing that I didn't show was turning out the points and going along the seams with, um, they, they make tools for it, I'm sure. You can use anything that's not too sharp or pointy, um, kind of a dull plasticky thing. I ended up using um, a mechanical pencil um, to just push out the corners a little bit better and go along the seams so that when I go to iron it, they just sit a little bit better. Um, so what I'm gonna do is um, try and get a bunch of the air out, iron it gently with low heat, and then carefully turn these open pieces here um, down to match, um, folding that while I'm ironing um, 
so that it looks like a continuous line. Um, so yeah, getting that folded and pressed nicely. And then I'm going to stitch around the, the outside um, top stitch basically so um, that it holds it down in place. And at that point you could do a straight stitch, you could do a zigzag stitch, which I think is what I did last time, or you could possibly do a um, uh, like a pretty stitch with like maybe scrolling leaves or something like that if you have uh, a fancier stitches on your machine. So I have gently ironed this on low. It's um, not easy to iron, you know, um, you definitely want to be very careful. So this iron is set on synthetic um, and it's nothing bad is happening, it's fine. But um, you don't want to like rub, you know, like you would with, with regular cotton fabric. Um, I just kind of pick it up and press, but I was just doing the, the edges. At any rate, um, it's warm, but it's not hurting the fabric at all. So um, mostly uh, this area is what I was concerned about trying to get ironed nicely. And I am not going to hand stitch this or anything. I'm just going to, I'm probably going to keep it simple and do a simple zigzag stitch around um, the edges. And that will enclose this for me and I won't have to worry about um, doing anything special for it as long as those zigzag stitches are close enough to the edge to really close that off. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I've just put two markers there so that I'm careful when I get to that point so that um, you know the fabric doesn't accidentally fold out or something like that. Um, and, that and then I'll be done.